Today we're gonna to cover 10 of my kind of more budget-friendly tools and appliances that I use uh, very frequently or have an impact on my day-to-day -day cooking that I think make me a better home cook. And I'll tell you why I've kind of chosen these items. I'll also give you prices and links if you do wanna pick up any of these things for yourself or for someone else this holiday season. And this video is in no way meant to say, just go out and buy all this stuff. I'm a huge proponent of learning how to cook with what you have. But these are things that I have purchased for my own kitchen and I think are well worth having. So let's dive in. First up is a large box of salt. Look, if you guys have seen any of my videos, you guys know how I feel about salting. I think it is the single most important skill for the home cook to learn in order to make better food. And this isn't to just say, you know, throw a bunch in. It's instead thinking about when you're adding it and how much you are adding to the dish. A big box of coarse kosher salt like this helps because you get to understand how the salt feels. You aren't jumping in between brands and varieties. And I personally use Morton's coarse kosher salt, which is like three or four bucks for a three pound box at my local grocery store. Diamond Crystal is another variety that people swear by, but the point is to pick a box and stick to it. Next behind salt, I think a sharp chef's knife is critical in becoming a better home cook. Now, not only will you prep food way faster, you'll also do it safer because you're not gonna have to really press into things as much. It's gonna glide right through the vegetables or whatever you're cutting up. And actually the only injury that I've had, significant injury, I've, I've, you know, I've had little nicks and things in there, but the only significant injury that I had to where I had to get stitches is because I was using a dull knife on a carrot and I put it down and the carrot rolled because it wasn't cutting through it and it sliced through the tip of this finger, had to get like five or six stitches. So I'm a huge proponent of using a sharp chef knife. Plus there's not much else quite as fun as when you're just breezing through some carrots or you're breezing through some onions and dicing it up. Now there are a ton of knives out there. Ones that I've actually used are the Mercer Culinary 8 inch Chef Knights. It's 18 bucks on Amazon and it's kind of a great beater slash starter knife for anyone just starting out. If you are looking for a bit of an upgrade, I would first look towards the Tojiro DP Gyuto 210 millimeter at around $85. It's what I would kind of call an entry level performance Japanese knife and it has much better edge retention, meaning it holds its cutting performance much, much longer. Now, my other knives that I use often are the Chinese Chef's Cleaver from Chef Knives To Go and a custom Nakiri from NTM Knives that I got as a present. But before you start with those, I would just pick up a chef's knife and learn how to keep it sharp. Speaking of, no matter if you got a $20 knife, you got this $85 one, or you spent like a couple grand on a Bob Kramer auction or something, eventually you're going to need a way to sharpen that knife. And for me, this is whetstones. It's a meditative process. It's fun to learn in my opinion. And whetstones in general are gonna be cheaper than kind of fancier sharpening systems. Now, these specifically are Shapton ceramics. They're about 50 bucks a piece, so not the cheapest. So if you are starting out, I would actually recommend looking towards a combo 1,000, 6,000 grit stone. You can normally pick them up for around 30 bucks on Amazon. And these are actually what I got for my brothers as Christmas presents last year. Now, if you do pick up some whetstones, I have some sharpening videos on my channel. And actually, I think my one sharpening video is like literally my most watched video on the channel. So check it out if you do pick up some of these. Next up, a scale is another invaluable tool for me. As someone who is sharing recipes, doing things by weight is going to be much more accurate and repeatable. So I only do my baking by weight. Um, I've completely gone by the way, so I don't even have like measuring cups here um, because I basically do everything by weight. And it's also great for nutrition. So like when I'm calculating some of my lower cow series, I can do 100 grams of chicken breast versus like a half cup of chicken breast. Like I don't know if those are small cubes. I don't know if they're big chunks. It's like you don't really know exactly how much it is. So it's great for that as well. And then in general, what I'm looking for in a digital scale is that it can weigh at least five kilos or around 11 pounds. And then the smallest unit of measure is one gram. Now I use the Nicewell food scale on Amazon. I think it's like 30 bucks. I think it looks quite nice, but there are definitely a bunch of options out there. Just look for the good reviews. Next we have thermometers, another crucial piece of equipment that just helps remove variables like cooking, just like the scale does. I know exactly how the meat's gonna turn out if I pull it at certain temperatures. And for example, say you pick up a steak for like 10 or $15, you know exactly how that steak is gonna turn out if you're using a thermometer versus what if you accidentally overcook it or something and it's kind of like, well, 
I just spent like 15 bucks, but I didn't actually make it how I wanted to make it. So it's kind of a tool that actually, in my opinion, kind of pays for itself over time. Now, the two that I use aren't necessarily budget friendly, but I would highly recommend them. First is the Thermapen MK4. At $99, it's a chef grade thermometer with a bright display that rotates and it's waterproof. I use this one for smaller cuts of meat. Now for a budget option to replace this, the company Thermoworks also do have the Thermopop at around $35. And it doesn't quite have the bells and whistles of the MK4, but the actual thermometer is right on point. Now for larger cuts and slower cooking, I generally use the Meter Plus. It's a Bluetooth thermometer that pairs to your phone and you set the cut exactly how you want it and away you go. Again, and another invaluable tool that just removes the guesswork from cooking. And then coming in at $30 is the Lodge Cast Iron Griddle. This is actually easily probably my most used pan for quick cooking things like smash burgers, grilled chicken, or frying up some onions, things like that. It basically lives on my stovetop, and I would highly recommend it. Now, the thing with this is it's really all about just taking care of the cast iron. So for me, I just cook on it pretty often. And then after I'm done cooking, I try to scrape anything that might be stuck onto it. And then I'll just rub it down with a paper towel or something. If there is some excess oil on there and just rub it into the spot. Now, if I do need to wash it under the sink and it kind of looks dry after I wash it, maybe I'll sprinkle just a, a drop or two of oil and just rub it in. But just keeping care of this is really what's gonna, what's gonna do it for you. You don't need to spend a lot on cast iron. It's really more about the care. Hopefully I'll have a video about cast iron care maybe in the next, next couple months so we'll get there but I absolutely love this thing. It literally, it just lives on my stovetop. I rarely take it off. So if you are a smash burger enthusiast, look no further than the Winco TKP-41. This is by far my favorite utensil that I've used. If you're gonna get the cast iron griddle, I would highly suggest picking this up while you're at it. It's metal, it scrapes. It's just like the perfect size for smash burgers as you can get leverage compared to longer ones um, where you may need to like add a little something to the top. Absolutely love this tool. Um, you can find this in restaurant supply stores for much cheaper than on Amazon. So if you do have a restaurant supply store, I would kind of look for this um, again on Amazon. I think I picked this up for like eight bucks in a store and it's like 20 something on Amazon. So just be on the lookout for that. And then the last kind of hands-on thing before I get to some organization things that I want to show you is this die cast um, mini food processor. So I picked this up for $60 at Williams and Sonoma and they do have a cheaper one that uses a plastic housing instead of the die cast one. I think it's the exact same motor, but this thing is great for you know hummuses, pestos, whipping up sauces, things like that. And actually my larger food processor had a part that broke and that is now discontinued. So instead of dropping a couple hundred or maybe several hundred for a Vitamix or something. I was like, I'll get this in the meantime, um, kind of run it through its paces and then kind of make that decision down the hand. But for anyone starting out, if you don't have any kind of blender or food processor, something like this is a great start. Um, it's not great for like smoothies. So if you are using it for smoothies, I probably wouldn't look here, but for other general food prep, this is a good item to have. Now for a couple organization items, this like $30 kitchen organizer rack is probably my number one item that I would say to get. It's a complete no brainer. Um, like I said, it's cheap. It's like 30 bucks. It's magnetic. So it goes right on. It's super sturdy and you can keep all of your quick grab sauces and oils here. So if you have a kitchen setup where it makes sense, where your fridge is kind of close to your stove or, or where you prep food, I would highly, highly recommend picking one of these up. And then last but not least is a magnetic knife strip to hang up your knives. Not only is it kind of a sexy way to show them off, but it honestly is probably one of the better ways to do so because you're not gonna place it in a knife block where it could actually dull the edge or trap moisture in there and rust your knife. So it's just a simple solution that looks really nice in your kitchen as well. And depending on the size you get, these range from like 35 to $70 for the wood ones. But again, just pick one out that works for your kitchen. And with that, hopefully that gives you some ideas of things that you maybe could pick up for your own kitchen or someone else's kitchen this holiday. Um, and again, you don't have to go out and get any of this stuff. These are just things that I find are worthwhile and you don't even have to get the same brands or anything. I try to list out generalities when I can, so just pick what's right for you in your kitchen. But that's gonna wrap it up for me in this one. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.